Hey everybody, this is Chris, Coalition Gaming, doing a little bit of a vlog kind of video today. I uh, wanted to go over a little project update for you guys, just to let you know what I'm working on. And uh, what I decided to go with, whoa, not that white balance, fix and focus, all right. So you can see right here behind me, and uh, you'll see some other shots. What I decided to do was to, uh, was to build some sort of budget workstation slash gaming rig. You think like uh, that's kind of what Ryzen is aimed at? Well, you know what? I figure, hey, can I do something similar to that and do it cheaply? Obviously, going to be going with Intel, not uh, not FX in that case, because I am going to be going back a few a few steps. And I settled on the uh, Xeon E5-1650. The e the version one is a Sandy Bridge EP socket 2011 processor. Version two is Ivy Bridge. It's about 50 bucks more on eBay, where the uh, version one is under $100 actually. I've seen it as low as $89 for a six core hyper threading beast. And uh, the core clocks in that one I believe is 3.2 gigahertz base to 3.8 gigahertz turbo. And I decided to approach it a couple of different ways. I wanted to go with some sort of like a budget motherboard, but then man, X58 has a similar issue. The platform that came before that that I did for the, uh, the do case build, the white one, my little brother's build, yeah. So I decided, hey, I did pretty good with that build. Let's take that a next, the next step up. So I found an HP workstation that I thought was X79, which is a step up from X58. But uh, once I got it, I realized, um, no, it's not quite X79. It's more the server slash or, uh, workstation oriented one that could support dual socket and things like that. And that is the Intel C602 chipset. However, it'll still support the process that I'm after. Obviously, I'm not gonna get any overclocking, but I wanted to see how, how I can build a system that way, considering the fact that those motherboards go for $100, and they are standard ATX, so even though they come out of a weird wonky system, uh, being standard ATX means that uh, you can still build a normal gaming computer out of it, or just a normal workstation computer in whatever case you want. You're gonna run into sense pin issues, and that's what I ran into with the X58 build, and eventually I overcame those, and I figured with that learning experience, I can take a shot at this. So in my searches for a normal working X79 motherboard that I can overclock with, that and that's a little caveat I'll get to in a second, um, I realized X79 boards are freaking expensive. Used, I don't know man, the scarcity of them or something is driving the cost up. And if you can overclock with one of those and the same with the X58 socket 1366, your, your, those boards are going for 250, three, four, five hundred dollars used on eBay or Craigslist or wherever you end up looking. They're worth a lot of money. And uh, I came across one through Reddit. It's an EVGA X79 SLI board. Um, overall in pretty good shape, except uh, one of the dims doesn't work. Supposedly it's because of bent pins. So I got that motherboard, $100. So uh, everything else supposedly works on this one because four of the bent pins are common ground. One of them is for a dim. Not exactly sure how that works, but uh, I can still run triple channel or dual channel. You know, it has four dim sockets on the motherboard, so you know it's it's still usable for like a budget workstation six core build, obviously. But uh, I want to see what I can do as far as getting that back up to its full potential. I took that board to a place called Fast Fix Jewelry. It's like a chain of quick fix jewelry jewelry shops in the malls around stuff like that. And uh, the guy took a crack at unbending the pins. Found one that was not really repairable, unfortunately. However, the uh, the other pins, he got them to look pretty good. So uh, I still have yet to boot the board up. It's something I gotta work on. And as far as the HP one goes, I'm waiting on another part that lets me convert its 18 pin proprietary power to, tra to a traditional 24 pin ATX power. So I can just use whatever power supply I want with it. Then I can get, work get to work on that one as well. So uh, that's just a little project update. Uh, the uh, little caveat I was going to mention about that Xeon, those uh, Xeon 16 seri 16 E5 1600 series, uh, they're mysteriously unlocked overclockable processors. I've actually heard of inklings from those processors hitting up to 5 gigahertz. So that basically overclocks as good as any Sandy Bridge i7 from back in the day that you'd expect it to, and that closes the gap significantly to the, uh, to the current crop of processors out there. And if it's under a hundred dollars, it's still it's still worth its weight easily. Like it's 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 worth a lot uh, as far as productivity goes, especially if you're gonna do like light to medium heavy duty gaming, light medium heavy duty whatever however that works, <laughs> and 
uh, and especially if you're going to be using like workstation stuff, rendering, encoding, things like that, it's definitely got its advantages. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have a look at that and see what, what, how far I can get. But that's just what I'm working on right now. Hopefully when I actually make more progress with it, I'll have a more complete video for you guys. All right, this is Chris. If you like this video, make sure you click that thumbs up button. Click that thumbs down button if you didn't like it. Subscribe for more, especially for what's coming. And I'll see you guys.